On this week's episode of The Intro, we're featuring Morgan Tony with two live performances. We'll chat with him right after he performs his song, Gojua. One, two, three, four. That's Morgan Tony with Gojua, Keith Mullins on vocals, percussion, and guitar. Morgan Tony is a 22-year-old Mi'kmaq fiddler from Wamakuk First Nation in Nova Scotia. He grew up playing drums, but transitioned to the fiddle while at Cape Breton University. In two short years, he fell in love with the fiddle and now makes music that unites Celtic musical tradition with Cape Breton's First Nations musical tradition. His debut album, First Flight, came out earlier this year. Morgan, I'm so excited to hang out with you. Welcome to the intro. Oh, thank you for having me. That song just wraps itself around you. What's Gojua about? Gojua is a traditional Mi'kmaq song that has been played here before the arrivals, uh, the first arrivals here in Nova Scotia. And it's a social song. So that being said, it's like a, a song for dancing, a song for gathering. And usually when we play the Gojua, it's at a powwow and all ages come and dance. And it's a beautiful thing to see. When we did the video in Eskasoni, we had uh, Jermaine Doucette, Beverly Jador, and uh, Mary Lafford to come and show us their beautiful steps. 
and they are gold draw champions and it was really great to have them on the video and i'm really glad how the video turned out and it was shot in the beautiful island of gold island up in Eskasoni. It is a really beautiful video, but what you can really feel when you're playing that music is it's really intended for community. Everybody is invited into that song mm -hmm. to take part. So it makes me wonder, when you play it live, how are audiences responding to Gojoa? It's something new for them, you know, for our audience. When we play in Mi'kmaq communities, they know every single word, and they're just proud to see that the Gojoa um, found a new place. You know, what me and Keith are doing, we're modernizing it with um, different sounds, with the guitar, the fiddle, harmonies, different instruments. And it's always a fun time to play it off the Mega Mile communities. Like, we just did a show in a theater in a place called Tata Magush the other night, and they loved it because it's so full of energy. Yeah, it's a song that just invites you to, to dance and sing along with it. I can totally imagine that. I would love, love, love to feel that live in, in real person. But we really get a feeling for that in the performance. Uh, what's really interesting is that you picked up the fiddle two years ago, but there's a much longer story there. Your great-grandfather and three of your great-uncles were also fiddlers. So how does it feel to continue that, that fiddling tradition in your family? It feels like I'm carrying on their legacy, and it's a wonderful thing, especially for my um, family, the Tonys. When I first started playing the fiddle, I didn't really know if anyone played the fiddle in my family. But it was my late Uncle Fabian that told me, there's history. There's history of fiddle players in our family. So yeah, like, my, like what you said, the great-grandfather, my great-grandfather played the fiddle. Three of my late great-uncles played the fiddle. And when I found out that, I felt like I needed to keep going because there was times when I had like doubt and I was like, I don't know if this is for me. But when I found out about family history like that, I just had to keep going. So I'm really glad that I did. And how was it when you were first, when you were first learning to play, did you feel like you had a real affinity for this instrument or was it a struggle? I think it started when I went to Cape Breton University and every Wednesday night they have these sessions in uh, different pubs. So on this Wednesday night, I went over to the governor's pub and being a music major at Cape Breton University, we always head out to those pubs just to be there surrounded by Celtic music. And this one night, I brought my fiddle just to try it out. But at the time, I was very shy. I wasn't on stage or anything. I wasn't much of a singer at the time. And that night when it came to my turn, I just brought out the fiddle and I started playing. And after I finished, it was so great to hear and applause and they were shocked because they're like who is this guy he just came uh this is the first time here and he's playing <laughs> traditional tunes like nothing so i think that's why kind of um that was the motivation that i needed so i had that love for playing for a live audience i just kept going there's a real theme here of of needing community, playing for community. That your your music is a, is a part of a bigger world than just you, um, mm -hmm. and that makes me think about your producer uh, Keith Mullins, who you work with very very closely. Can you tell me about the relationship working with him? Yeah, so we met through my cousin, and Keith's um, girlfriend was working at um, a little place on the shore, not on the shore, on the wharf called the Freight Shed. And my cousin also worked there. So I believe Keith was playing there that night and my cousin um, met up with Keith and he was like, hey, you gotta meet my cousin Morgan, he plays the fiddle. And Keith was like, yeah, sure. So Keith messaged me and we had a little conversation going, got to know each other a little bit. We did a couple shows together, but it wasn't until we did a show in Wagama First Nation, um, I think it was pancake night in February, a huge night. And I told Keith, it's like, I'm going to try something new. I was like, you can join me if you want, but it's going to be different because we've been playing fiddle sets all night. And he was like, okay, sure. So I started playing the gojo like how I usually play it, just me on the fiddle and me singing. And Keith joined along and I played it. And Keith looked at me with a very serious face after we played the gojo and said, I got to record that. So we did. We recorded the Gojua, and then that one song turned into a couple songs, and then we started to co-write a little bit, and we put out our first um, tune called Imsit Nogama. So we have this really wonderful relationship right now. 
a great partnership, a great friendship. And we love our drives together when we're going to different shows. I'm a faster driver than he is. And he's a little bit slower than me, but it's fine. Yeah, we have, we're like, we're like brothers. This next one is really more in that, in that prayer space. Uh, this one is titled Emsit Nogama. You were just mentioning it. Can you tell me a little bit more about this song? Yeah. So when me and Keith sat down for the very first time and started to write, we kind of had a feel of what we wanted to do, you know, with the forms and what the feel was for the song, but we didn't know what to sing about. And we were kind of stumped. And Keith was like, what is an important phrase that the Mi'kmaq people use? And I was like, oh my goodness, it's Imsit Nogama. That is an important phrase for us. We always say Imsit Nogama after every speech, you know, after every gathering. And that kind of tells you that, you know, we are here. We're here to celebrate with one another. And we're here to cherish one another. We're all a team. So that's kind of what Imsit Nogama means. And, and if you translate it to English, it means all my relations. Well, that's interesting. I, I was going to ask you if, if elders have played a big part in, in guiding you through this album. Huge. Like, especially for, like, if we were to record, I know when we recorded the Mi'kmaq Honor Song, I had to go talk with a few elders first because I didn't know, because that is such an important song for the album, and usually people do not record it. There's been a few, but not too much, because we just respect that song so much, because that's like our anthem, right, of the Mi'kmaq people. So I talked to a few elders, and they were like, I think you should, like, what you guys are doing? With that new sound, it needs to be heard because our music, it needs to be shown in other ways as well. So I'm really glad that we went with this direction, with the Mega Maltic uh, direction, and we came up with First Flight. And we get to listen to it right now. This is Morgan Tony with Emsit Nogama. One, two, three. Guidance to walk in harmony To conquer our enemies The greatest ones are within you, see Let my soul take in The beauty of the day and the sun go This is how we end our prayer. Him sitting over my for all in life, the trees, the air. Him sitting over my. This is how we end our prayer. For all the life, the trees, the air, Imsid Nogama. This is how we end our prayer. Imsid Nogama. For all the life, the trees, the air, Imsid Nogama. This is how we end our prayer.
That was Morgan Tony with Emsit Nogama. Morgan, I have loved speaking with you. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You can read more about Morgan Tony and check out other artists we've presented on the intro at cbcmusic.ca. This is CBC Music's The Intro, a weekly feature on essential emerging Canadian talent. I'm Saroja Coelho.